Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. We are back another week. And once again, we are here to enlighten you in the world of sports. I'm the one and only Big Game Dame. This is my man, Do. And it was a slow week in sports. Yes. <laughs> it was a really, really slow week in sports. But we did lose something. Something, uh... Passed away this week. What was that? <laughs> the Philly season. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> a lament for the Phillies. Uno, Domino's Pizza, Quattro's. <laughs> it is over. As we speak, news just dropped. Reese Hoskins, they're shutting him down for the rest of the year. He's going to need surgery. <sighs> Long week. I remember you said just enjoy the ride, just see what happens. But all of their problems came right back. They got in first place, played some good teams, and the same Phillies came back. What do you think? Listen, are they on life support? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Am I ready to pull the plug? Not yet. I wonder. Look, ideally, it would be great if they could keep it interesting to opening day for football. Like yeah. that would be great. Um, so, like I said, if you put your heart into it. As I advise, don't give up. So, okay. the last time we talked about the Phillies, they were one game up in first, yes. I believe. Now they're five games out. Yes. And they're five behind in the wild card. Yes. I think it's time to. No, because what I'm going to say I'm is. I'm hearing overweight women singing. It, it's, it's the dog days of summer. And they're As dogs. You said, it was a slow week. And I'm predicting. The Phillies win all four against Arizona. I don't know how much of well, that is a big <laughs> limb compared to what happened last okay. week. Okay, but okay. If they sweep the series against Arizona, I think that keeps them relevant right about to maybe that Friday before opening kickoff. <laughs> yeah. They got a better chance at buying four Arizona iced teas and beating <laughs> Arizona four times. I just the there are problems always. The bullpen always comes up. Yeah. And, like, the game last night is just a perfect example where I think, I totally think Girardi, uh, I think he just pressed. Like, normally mm -hmm. a normal manager, would you go to your bullpen right there. But he didn't. See, I, because it's like, no. I, I, I agree with him keeping his ace in. He only had yeah. 95 pitches going to the ninth inning. You got to remember, he's playing the best team in baseball record-wise. Yeah. Um. You know, after that leadoff hit, okay, I can see there, but I don't have a problem with him giving Will the ball to start the ninth. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, and, and on top of that, I mean, you trust they ball pit? I mean, no. I, think so. I mean, that, and that's my point. So. Is you had to, like, you had to. Like, I would have done the same thing and just, you know, the press is going to kill me anyway. I yeah. would just fell on the sword for that because you cannot trust those yeah. people. And you you either way, he couldn't, have, he, he would have lost because if he bring the bullpen in and they blow it like they've been doing it, everybody would have yeah, said, you might as well leave Willer in there because you know your bullpen isn't any good anyway. Yeah. So that's one of those, that's just a tough position He's to be damned in. if he does, damned yeah. if he didn't. And the Phillies are damned because it's the same team Every year with the same issues. Look, let's just hope they can get us to opening day weekend. That's what. That's what, what we hope. When you say <laughs> get us to, what do you mean? Like what I mean is that they're still they're not mathematically eliminated. <laughs> Come, <laughs> they're, they're spiritually <laughs> eliminated right now. <laughs> so I'm I'm just hoping that you know that maybe with twenty games to go, they're three games out. Okay, that that's my. All right, so I'm just going to put it on the record right now. This is on vinyl. They ain't doing nothing, okay? They're going to be eight, five games out. The next time we do a podcast, ten games out. I'm calling it right now. Ten right. games. Eight to ten. I'll, I'll backpedal a little bit. Eight to ten out. We'll see if I'm right. We'll see if you're right. Okay. All I'm right. not betting on it, but I'm hoping for it. <laughs> okay, so you can tell anytime I talk about the Phillies, I'm a little antsy, but something else got me perturbed this week as well. What's that? Eagles preseason. Okay. Two reasons. Number one, um, Eagles fans, we all saw that game. Okay. I mean, that thing was like, like this is, you might as well watch the CFL game. You could have okay. got better entertainment out of that. It was just so, I mean, it, it just did not look like 
there was a seriousness by the coaching staff. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Now, we heard, if you you know, when you listen to the broadcast, they talked about how they had an impressive week of practice. Yes. Then Jalen Hurts, and there's nothing you could do about that, get sick. And it, sick. sick. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and from that point, they just literally tanked it. Well, here's what. If I want to look at a glass half full, do you really remember preseason games? I mean, unless something special or somebody got no. hurt, you don't remember preseason games. So I take it for what it is. Listen, um, would I have liked to see the starters get some reps? Absolutely. But um, at the end of the day, it's more important to be healthy. Yeah. And if the coach is dissatisfied with the work that they got in during the joint practices, I'm okay with that. And that gets to my point because I paid $200 for those, more than $200 mm -hmm. for those preseason tickets. You know, you're forced to buy them. I'm a season ticket holder. You're forced to buy them over $200 on these tickets. Okay. You know what I sold them for? Mm -hmm. 20 bucks because nobody wants to go to these dangling games. Yeah, yeah. If the coaches are not taking these serious, I should not have to pay for these. NFL, it's a disgrace. It's an embarrassment. You can give those tickets to poor inner city kids. You can give those tickets to poor rural kids. I'm out. It's a business. It's a bit, but it's, I know it's capitalism, but they're, they're not ripping forcing, me off. They're not forcing you to, uh, they're, they're the literally tickets. forcing me. How? They're forcing me. That's the choice. It's that like you saying, decide. all right. You know what you're getting involved okay. with when you purchase the tickets, the season tickets, right? Okay. And, and I guarantee you, Come week five, if they're surprising people, you're not going to be thinking about the preseason or anything. You're going to be like, yo, I'm happy with my person. It, it, you know, it's like dating Rihanna, but she's like, here's the thing, though. You got you to gotta babysit my cross-eyed nephew if you want to go out with me. Listen, I don't care what Rihanna says. If I'm dating Rihanna, then I'm doing whatever she says. So I don't think so that's you, the equivalent. You all up in the preseason? Listen, whatever she says, I got the you chocolate. Are. It's like you go to the market. Your wife call you. Okay, I got this. I got that. Whatever you need. So you're wait. babysitting the cross-eyed nephew. Yes. Was, yes, yes. <laughs> no problem. He, he's drawn all over your walls and everything. I'm not With even asking what I got. To do. Just give me the list. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I'm like, I, I'm I'm doing it too. But I might have to say something. I'm like, I really gotta look after this fool. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you nephew. Fool. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. So my whole deal is this because you know I'm out. Like, I I took a serious hit. Twenty stinking dollars. My tickets moved for halfway through the first quarter. It's probably a Patriots fan when they saw they were up already. Um, yeah, just look at or just like, somebody who wanted to get in the stadium. Yeah, just look at somebody who might not get an opportunity to see a professional game, and they got to see some some people, and maybe maybe somebody that plays on a second string team actually pops, and some lucky person got to see them before they popped. Right. Well, here's the deal. I'm just next year. I'm just giving these damn going tickets away. So hit me up Twitter. Hit me up Instagram. First go. come, first serve. They're free because this twenty dollars ain't mean nothing. I'm throwing money away anyway because the NFL, you're a con artist. Okay? I said it. You're grifters. Now, I'm a little bitter. I admit, a little bitter, a little bit. The opinions of, are his and his only. <laughs> <laughs> they stiffed me on 200 bucks. So, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, slow week in sports, as we've been saying. Really, really slow week. So anything in regards to just anything that stood out to you this week, let's talk about. Um, the Eagles. Let's talk about the Eagles and Atlanta. Week one is right around the corner. Yes. So what I want to ask you is this. They're kind of the reports that we've been getting are all over the place with this team. Mm -hmm. You know, you keep hearing this guy looks good. Hertz looks good. And literally because they report every day on practice now. You know, oh, Hertz looks this way. Hertz looks that way. Then you see a lot of reports. Some people saying, oh, the Eagles could be a surprise. Then some people think the Eagles are going to win three or four games. Mm -hmm. So as an Eagles fan, here's my question. Okay. What can happen between now and week one to kind of reassure you that, that this is not going to be a four-win team? Or is it just, we got to say it. If it's one thing, is that nobody gets hurt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they've been, they've had so much bad luck with injuries over the last, what, since the Super Bowl. Even that Super Bowl season, they had bad yeah, luck they got, injuries. Yeah. So, players. Um, if, 
if, you know, knock on wood, I don't hear that somebody got hurt in practice between now and opening day because it seemed like that always happens. We, they, we lose a key player before we even start the season. So all I want to be able to do is line up in Atlanta with a healthy team and then to be able to evaluate. Once again, rather they're going to be a surprise team, rather they're going to be a three or four win team. Like right now, I have no expectations. So I just want to watch it play. Like to me, this season is just wherever it takes me. I just want to be able to evaluate the players and know what we have going forward. If yeah. we catch lightning in a bottle, great. If we don't, then we know who who can we proceed with and who do we need to cut bait with. So for me, let's just get there healthy and be able to evaluate these players without injury. All right. Well, I'm going to give you three scenarios. Okay. Okay. So. And I'm going to force you as a sports fan, because, you know, sports fans, we love to play the prediction game. Okay. All right, so here's the first prediction. Both the offensive line and defensive line stay relatively healthy this season. To me, that's the best case scenario. Yes. And that leads me to the, they can win a division. They can win a division. They can win. If, if both offensive lines stay healthy, to me, that means playing at least 13 games. Mm-hmm. They, they absolutely can win a division. Okay. So how about if the offensive line stays healthy, but the defensive line gets banged up? They just don't have the depth to su- to sustain that. I, I think they actually have more depth on the defensive line yeah. than the offensive line. So if, if you force me to choose which unit, I would say, okay, the defensive line has a little bit more depth. I think then what you're looking at is – Okay, how good are the other teams in the division? If the if nobody in the division runs away, mm-hmm. then I think they can be competitive. Yeah. And final scenario, which I think is worst case scenario, the offensive line gets mm-hmm. banged up. Um, which is the norm, the new norm. Yeah, that's the new um, norm. Yeah. The reason that like that's also a worst case scenario because then I think are you able to evaluate Hurts the way you want to? Yeah. You know, because having a great offensive line, then it takes away any excuse. You can't say, well, if he had this, he had Yeah, so, he's going to be running for his life all season So if like, that th- happens. That's like, as you said, that's the worst case because then I don't want to go into next season not knowing what we have and Jalen Hurts. Mm-hmm. I think this season is all about finding out, okay, I'm not even going to say if, if he's a franchise quarterback, but is he's, if he's a viable starting quarterback. That's the number one thing we have to get figured out this year. And if the offensive line is banged up, that can be compromised. Okay. And final question, what are you looking forward to for week one? The unknown. This is a, a unknown coaching staff. So I'm looking to see um, their philosophy. I'm looking to see – I'm really honing on on the defense. I want to see what type of um, system he's going to run because, like, I'm – I'm in the dark, so I don't know if he's going to be – is he going to blitz? Is he going to play soft? Like, I have no idea what they're going to do. So, I'm just interested in the unknown. So, like, I, I'm intrigued by that. Yeah, and for me, it's the young players, in, yeah. in particular the receiver core. Okay. Um, Just because there's talent there, but, you know, the rub is can they put it together? Mm-hmm. Can they put it together and just when you got a Heisman Trophy winner, you know, and you put it with – and somebody like Quez – you know, six round pick, but you know, just keep showing, just keep showing. So, you know, it's a lot of curiosity, there's a lot of intrigue for me personally around that. Because if those guys produce and, you know, like relatively you your offensive line stays healthy, like you said, mm-hmm. you know, like this might winter might not be such a doldrum experience in Philadelphia, you know, yeah. we could, could I, I have a little interest here. I don't think it should be a doldrum experience anyway. And I think that's why I keep harping to fans about where they should set their expectations. You know, if, if you're going into this, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're going into the saying, look, we're just evaluating. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to see what we have. I think you'll have a more enjoyable f- football season. I think if the, if the season gets away from the Eagles, which is possible, if you view it in that way, then it won't be the doldrum. It won't be a long season because you know what? You can say, okay, I want to see if my, my Halada is a long-term left tackle. I want to see if the quarterback is good. I think then you can watch the game through a different prism where, you know, it isn't about wins and losses, but it's a Quez Watkins. Is he some? Yeah. Is he a building block? You know, this this linebacker, Singleton, that they say he's making all these plays. Is he somebody yeah. we can count on in the future? If you, if you approach it that way, then – it's not a long season. Yeah, if you look at it, I agree with you. If you look at the young players, like mm-hmm. let's take my lot, who Brian Balding loves. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching an interview with him. 
Um, if you take a look at all of these young guys who are going to be the next era potentially for the Philadelphia Eagles, and you see them at the beginning, kind of like when we first saw Westbrook get out there or Shady get out there, you know, you take that level of excitement of what's to come, mm-hmm. then that might bring down the expectations a little bit and be observers, you know. And I don't know, in this town with the sports culture, can the majority of the fan base be observers? I hope so. This this is what I would I would say to the to this rabbit fan base is maybe the perfect scenario is this team is competitive all year. Maybe the division is as is as bad as is being predicted and they stay in a race and come around week 14, 15, they're still alive and they, they get that taste. And then next year they come back like, you know, we want to win this thing. So like and to me, that would be a good season. Yeah. And I think that's a good note to end on. You know, just a little fingers crossed, a little luck, a little hope. Stay healthy. Stay healthy, guys. Stay healthy. And all of you stay healthy as well. This is going to be it for today. So, once again, my man Du, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Big Game Dame. This is the Philly Sports Dish Podcast. Follow us on all social media platforms. Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Carrier Pigeon, anything. (laughs) We're there. We got you, all right? Follow us. Support, all right? So, until next time, which Philadelphia Eagles coming up. Okay. And the death of the Philadelphia Phillies. (laughs) All right. We will see you guys. Please stay safe. God bless. We're out.